getting out of here in a few minutes. You've been a model prisoner. Neat, willing, courteous, hardworking. I'd feel real good about this except for one thing. I know you've just been marking time, waiting to get your hands on that money. Nick, I'd hope we could talk. I've served my time, Warden. The state's all finished with me now. As long as that money is missing, there'll be a spotlight right on you. You stole it and hid it so it couldn't be found. All right. From now on, all you have to do is sneeze, and the police will be right there with a tape recorder. I'm a free man. I'll take my chances. I was hoping you got smarter. You came here wild and dumb. For a while, I thought you were learning something, going to school, being cooperative. You're no smarter, just older. I figure I'm smart enough. All right. The time's up. And Nick, remember this. You're no ordinary ex-con. You're a walking target. Thanks a lot. You're looking good. Thanks, son. But you would have looked a lot better in there. Just once in five years. Well, Nick, I... Nick, it was those walls. I couldn't go in there. I tried. Baby, I'll make it up to you. Harvin? Hey, look out! Uh, I'm Al Kramer, the record. Tell me, how's it feel to get out? Got any plans? Yeah. Peace and solitude. What? Peace and solitude, Kramer. Five years ago, I didn't know what they meant. Now I know, and I'm going to enjoy them. Marvin! Max Brodley, headquarters. Detective squad. Big cop, huh? That's right. I'm a cop. You're a louse. Careful, cop. I'll sue you for slander. Well, I heard you got yourself an education inside. You're not so quick with the hands anymore, huh? I'm a law-abiding citizen. No, you're not. You're smart, Harvard. But you're still a louse. I'll see you around. Probably on a slab. Think he knows where the money is? Sure, sure. You know, Lieutenant, he was sizing me up. Like he was figuring whether he could take me or not. You're bigger than he is. Yeah. But I could see him figuring just how to move if he had to. Whatever move he makes, you make it too. There'll come a time when he'll go for the money. You be there. I'll help him count it. The things I've been dreaming about. Just driving any place, anywhere I want. 
that all you dreamed about, Nick? What's the pitch, Susie? It's no pitch, Nick. It's just... Baby, can't we pick it up again? Just like that? After nothing? Five stinking years of nothing? Nick, I, I was just a kid. I was scared. I, I just couldn't... All right, Susie. We'll try it again. I guess nothing could change this whole place. Well, you put it in my name, Nick. I figured I could keep it. For you. For me. I gave it to you, Susie. A long time ago. You know, I uh, thought we were heading this way, but uh, I couldn't remember. But anyway, it's, uh, it's a real welcome. Hey, cut it off, will you? I'm blushing. Jay, <laughs> baby. baby boy, it's good to see you. Oh, hey, let go, you cement crusher. Welcome home, Nick. You know, I, I tried to visit you, but no dice. No ex-cons get in except to stay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. Oh, boys, the important thing now is that we're all here, safe and together. That's right. And with both of you here, it's a real homecoming. So here's a toast to Nick Harbin. <laughs> a toast to five years of my life. Nicky! Oh, he's still the wild man. The human dynamo never walks, always running. I'm not gonna run anymore. Oh, Nicky, honey, you didn't have to blow up a storm. Oh, boy, are you still nervous? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, uh, I got some sense kicked in me in five years, but I usually don't go off like that anymore. Ah, oh, I forget it. You know, you look in wonderful shape, Nick. Solid. Oh, yeah, Davy, I, I kept in good condition, all right. They, uh, in there, you gotta keep moving. You gotta do something or you go crazy. Nick, honey, relax. It's all over now. Sure, come on. Here, let's drink to the good times. To the future, huh? All right. Yeah, here's to the future. May she be fat and rich. <laughs> well. Now, what's the pitch? What do you know? The loot, the bundle. Look, Dave, all I want right now is a good suit and then a real dinner. I want a steak, a big steak, and a knife to cut it with. Look, kids, first I gotta relax, then I can start planning. And the first plan is you and me. Nick, still the fast talk? No fast talk, baby. I've been uh, dreaming too long. Now I'm going to start living. Okay, Nick. We'll talk later. Shall we have dinner here? My treat. The biggest steak in town. And uh, don't get anxious, Nick. It's just a steak. And I'll stay home in my knitting, and I'll leave you two all alone. Baby. You're still my boy. I'll take it. But right now, I got a little shopping to do. Oh, what are you using for money? Money. Well, Davy, I sewed mail sacks, I made gift boxes, and I combed jute, and I saved my dough. I got nearly a thousand bucks on me, so don't worry. I'm loaded. <laughs> and you? You, uh, just make yourself beautiful, and that's steak medium rare. Huh? Hun? Hurry back. He 
he's gone. That big ape. Laying his hands on you like, like, first plan, you and me. Well, darling, after all. Take it, take it. That was through my drink in his face. Oh, baby, no. You remember how fast he was with his hands? He'd have killed you. After all, I was his girl. That was five years ago. Dave, I hate it too. I don't know, maybe we should just get out of here. Forget him and the lousy money. Forget 260,000 bucks? Look. Now look, baby. I want everything to be right with us. Everything silk and sable. And baby, we'll cash in and we'll coast forever, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't want you hurt. You know, double-crossing Nick might be too dangerous. Forget it. Nick hasn't got a chance. Not the way I got things set up. So don't you worry, huh? Cocker Spaniel. He's always nipping at my heels. Well, we put a muzzle on him this time. Arnie, yeah. do you still intend to do something about Nick Harbin? You're talking about muscle? Muscle is for hoods. I'm a businessman. I'm going to take that money away from Harbin the minute he goes after it. Well, we don't want to stir up anything just now. Harbin doesn't know me. I don't know him. How can I possibly be connected with anything? Well, there's always a possibility that, uh, that payroll money's still hot. This guy, Prince, brought me a deal worth almost a quarter of a million dollars. You expect me to pass up something like that? That'll be Prince now. People want a deal handled right, Paul. They come to the guy who can do it for them. I'm a useful citizen in this community. You always forget that. I never forget it. You pay me $100,000 a year. <laughs> Hi, kid. Hello, Mr. Huffman. It's all right. You can talk. You find out anything from Harbin? No, he's still wound up. Won't make conversation. But tonight's his first night out. He's going to be with this girl. He'll tell her. And she'll tell him. You see, Paul? No problem. You have a drink? Yeah, please. I'm counting on your complete loyalty, Prince. Well, you have it, Mr. Hoffman. Look, I'm no sucker. I get my 10%. That's 26,000 bucks. I'm a happy man. No worries about crossing your pal? He's not paying for my loyalty. You're a smart boy. If this goes all right, maybe we'll do some regular business. Thanks. I'll keep in touch. Do that. Okay, stick with it then. And try and get a picture. Which of the camera boys is available? Mm, Johnny Lang. You've used him before, Al. Okay, you got Lang. When Harbin makes a try for the dough, we want to get the story first. Mm. There was a cop waiting for him, too. Max Braden. Mm, Iron Man. Harbin's in trouble then. Yeah, Harbin's a pretty cagey boy. Maybe he can think faster than Brodney can throw a punch. That was real good, Susie. I'd have forgotten what a steak tasted like. Or real coffee. Is that all you can think about, hmm? Mm. What's the matter? Do I taste like onions or something? Honey, look, it's uh, been five years. I can't unwind in just a few hours, you know. Sorry, I got too many ideas to think about. And too many problems, too. Tell Sue, darling, you wouldn't uh, be thinking about buried treasure, say. Whatever happened to Sammy Russo's pa? Russo? 
Who is it? Oh, the old Italian guy. Well, you know Nick. When Sammy got shot, he sang on you and the whole deal. But not where the money was hidden. Well, no, Nick, but everything else. And then after he died, why, his pa began lushing up and putting away about a quarter of that red ink a day. He got caught in the rain or something. Anyway, he got pneumonia and... Yeah, and that was my fault, too. I talked Sammy into it. Well, Nick, it was a good deal. A quarter of a million dollars, brother. Yeah, yeah, that was such a good deal, they're both dead. Honey, you're all right, and that's all that's important. No, Susie, look, it isn't that easy. Look, you do something, anything, it doesn't matter. Right away, a hundred people, you people you don't even know, they get caught up in it and they get dragged along. Sam's wife, Gail. What happened to her? Well, how should I know? She took off. I asked you to look her up. Well, I did. But she moved. I never did like her anyway, her with her big brown eyes. You've always had a yen for that little farmer's daughter, haven't you? I said it was my fault Sammy's dead. I owe his wife something. Well, what are you going to give her, Nick? A cut of that cheap grand you saved up in the pen? Sammy's share of the loot is going to her. Nicky, then you have got it. A quarter of a... A quarter of a million bucks. Nick, honey, if there's anything you need, any help, I, I can get you some front Relax, money Relax, will you? Want. Look, baby, every cop in the state's got an eye out for me. I can't just go down to the corner and start digging. Well, of course not, darling. Maybe I can get it for you. Sweet Sue. You know, 260,000 bucks is a pretty big package. I don't think you could even lift it. I was only trying to help, Nick. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, the town's full of helpers. Real eager beavers. They can smell that green around corners. And if I so much as sneeze, that cop Broadney's right there with a handkerchief. Well, it's worth it, isn't it, Nick? What have we ever had? Baby, now you can have anything you want. And maybe I can get a cut of it. Sure. Sure, honey, there's uh, always room for one more. Open up, Harvin. It's a cup. Evening, Nick. Nice little pad you've got here. My friends call me Nick, and you weren't invited. Don't quote your civil rights at me, Harbin. Who owns this joint? I do. And who are you? Susan Mallory. Born Sophia Mankowski, three appearances juvenile court, two arrests, one for accosting, one for accessory after burglary. I didn't ask for your fat face cop, and I don't have to take any lip from you. Now get out of here. Nicky. Harbin, you're a louse, and a louse takes what he can get. Now, if I thought you had that money stashed around here, I'd bounce your head around like a basketball. We'll try it. Tough, huh? Real muscle? Nicky, I've heard about this one. He gets his kicks beating up on guys. Just remember, Harmon. Wherever you go, just listen. I'll be there. Nicky, he's going to stay right on top of you. That's why you've got to tell me where the money is so I can get it while they're tailing you. I told you I'm going to take care of it. Our cut goes to Gail Russo. Then we'll get out of here. You're just dying to set her up, aren't you? Where are you going? Out. Back to town. Well, I can't stay here with that flat-footed peeping Tom running around outside. Yeah, sure. Run along. Nikki, it doesn't make any difference, does it? I mean, it's just that I feel funny, because... Well, Nikki, the idea... The cop's right outside. It's all right. Go on, I said. Should have known they'd track me down here anyway. I'll see you tomorrow. Sure. We'll figure it out then. Hmm? 
Harbin. See it in the record tomorrow. Dave, he'll be back. You'll see. Great. One quarter of a million bucks. And you got to play an innocent. I couldn't stand him pawing me. He was all right for you once, wasn't he? Now, you better pray. Pray he's not on a fast flight to South America. Dave, he will be back. You'll see. Well, he better. Change my mind. Take me to the end of Commonwealth by the stockyards. Well, he knows we're on his tail. Fine. I want him to know it. Every time he takes a breath. I've been doing this since I was 10. Look, uh, tell that big ape I got things to do and I don't want him nosing around, will That guy must be nuts or something. You should be so nuts. Said he has something to take care of. Didn't want you nosing around. What's the quickest way to the other side where he's going? Well, you gotta go all the way back. I'll be. Then around 28, and then on down Thanks. to come the Nobody else. Get me. You know Mrs. Uh, Gail Russo? Now listen, mister. When she moved out of here, she said I could stay here. She gave me permission. Honest, mister. You mean she lived here? Sure. After she rented the house, she moved in here. Why would she live in a filthy place like this? She didn't have no money, mister. Uh, the roof don't leak. She could have got a job. <laughs> in this town? No, she wouldn't stay here. She hated this place. I guess she hated everybody except me. She gave me a sweatshirt and a pair of pants. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess she had a right to hate everybody. Uh, she was just going to stay here until she could sell the garage, but people stopped buying stuff in this neighborhood 30 years ago. You know Mrs. Russo pretty good, mister? Yeah, Packy, pretty good. Look, uh, you said when she couldn't sell the garage, she took off. Where? I ain't had much of a memory lately. Let's see. She didn't have much. A suitcase, some boxes. She put him in the car. Car? What car? What car? It was a two-door sedan, green? Hey, listen, you ain't from the finance company, are you, mister? No, Packy, not that kind of finance. No. You can tell me who this fella is. Maybe I'll believe you. 
suppose so. Where'd you get this? It was stuck in the back of the bureau. How about her husband? We could uh, have some coffee. The dishes are clean. Coffee helped me to remember more. Maybe it'll help me remember that place she went to. Make mine black. I guess her husband was a pretty nice fella. Yeah, a girl like that wouldn't marry no bum. She'd know better. Fella's lucky to find a good girl when he's young. Makes the guy watch his P's and Q's. It's sort of a gag for Gail. It's our first month's anniversary present. Anniversary? Oh, Sammy. In a couple of hours, you're going to be able to buy her a diamond ring about as big as your fist. Nick, not so loud, huh? Why? Look, she's coming over here. I don't want to worry her. You didn't tell her, did you, Sammy? About the payroll? Yeah. No, honest, of course I didn't, Nick, no. You let me go in for a second. Look, Nick. Look, she wants me to get out of messing around with hot rods. She don't want me talking about big money. She wants me to get a steady job. Nick, that's why I put in with you. I need money. I want to buy a garage in a paying neighborhood. A garage? Yeah. Oh, Sammy. Look, boy, you're going to be loaded. Don't you know what that means? You're going to be loaded. You won't have to mess around with this axle grease anymore. I like working with cars. Look, Gail's father's got a restaurant out in Arizona, a little place called Gold City. Gail said the only reason she married me is because I don't smell from bacon grease. Gail, Gail. Judas, Sammy, it didn't take you long to get pounded to size, did it? Sam, you inside? Hi, baby. Oh, you taste like machine oil. Oh, I'm sorry, honey, I forgot. Oh, here, I fixed a lunch for you. You know, for the big job this afternoon. Oh. Oh, the job, sure. Hey, uh, didn't you bring anything for me? Well, I figured you'd eat Sam's anyway, so I packed double. <laughs> well, I'll put this inside. Huh? You were working on something in there? I didn't know you had anything going here. Oh, nothing important. Something just came up, a valve job. <laughs> no. I mean, no, Stan, I can talk to Nick. I'll be right back. Cigarette? Relax, Gail. Sammy didn't have a chick in there, you know. Well, I didn't think he did. I think you forgot something. Today's your one-month anniversary. Sammy's got your car in there, Gail. He's fixing it up for you. He's polishing it and grease job and seat covers and the whole works, you know? It's his idea of a hot anniversary present. Well, I think it's a lovely present. It's thoughtful and sweet. Oh, well, sure. Uh, Sammy, he's a sweet guy. He's not a heel like me. That isn't funny. I know it. Wasn't really supposed to be. Oh, Nick, why can't you leave us alone? Us? Sammy doesn't know, Gail. It's not bothering him, just me. And you. Nick, I married Sam. I intend to stick by that marriage. I'm not going to let it bother me. Sure, sure. You just turn it on and off like a faucet. How do you think I feel hanging around here like a big third wheel, watching you and Sam? Okay, all right. I'm going to get out of here. With a little luck, Gail, by tomorrow you can just start forgetting all about me. Oh, Nick, I'm sorry. I know it's been difficult for you, too. a little longer, Nick, and we'll be all finished. Look, I think I better run along home. Do a good job. Bye, Nick. That's the word. Goodbye, Gail. Everything's gonna be all right, huh, Nick? Yeah. Yes, sure. Come on, Sammy. Nick, I'm, I'm scared stiff. I'm, I'm sweating. I'm so of scared. Of course you're sweating, Sammy. It's hot outside. It's July. Look, pretty soon you can buy yourself a room full of air conditioners. Let's take a look at the First National. I covered it in case she came in here. Look, Nick, I still don't like the idea of using her car. Nah, she won't even know. Besides, where else can we find anything as safe as this, huh? 
We got Arizona plates from another state, see? And nobody even knows she's got a car. Now, what cop's gonna connect that up, huh? Yeah. Maybe, maybe there'll be trouble. That's it, Sammy. If there is trouble, we just hop in this car and we drive away. We're tourists from Arizona, that's all. What you got in there, huh? See this? Yeah. It's clean. Here. Hey, put the money in here. Rock wool goes on top, huh? Mm -hmm. Take this piece. Slides in there. You weld this and it's there for years. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right, Sammy. Yeah, but a couple of months will be plenty. And the heat will die down, and uh, you and I, we're going to start living right. Yeah, it's uh, getting a little late. Let's bring it ready. Okay, here's what happens. Jerry will be in the stolen car, parked across the street down a ways. You and I will come up opposite sides of the street, see? Yeah. And when the guard brings that door out of the side entrance, you slug it. Nick, are you sure it'll work? What's the matter with you, Sammy? Sure, I'm sure it'll work. Look, we jump him, we slug him. You grab the dough, you give it to Jerry when he comes driving by. Yeah. Then you go get Gail's car and I go in the opposite direction. Yeah. You meet Jerry, you get the dough, he dumps a hot car and we lock it up. That's all. That's all. That's all, huh? Nick, couldn't we use a sap or a gun, maybe? Don't be a stupid jerk, Sammy. So we carry a little piece of wood. What's a little piece of wood? Nobody will even notice it, kid. Look, with this thing, you can hit just like you were using a ball bat. Jerry got shot. He's, he's dead. Sammy, you come too. You hear me? We gotta get this money hidden. Look, kid, there's a fortune there. There's a lot more than we figured. Now you get under that car.
Abby. Did you make enough, Packy, to help you remember? Old pot. <laughs> you know, I've been trying to think. You'd figure a young girl like that would go home instead oh. of just... Packy, have you ever heard of a place called Gold City in Arizona? Yeah, yeah. That's it, mister. Arizona. That's what she said. Now look, Packy, you got to be sure. Now, you sure? <laughs> Coffee ain't never failed me yet. Okay, here. You buy yourself ten pounds. Martingale. Seen the city papers? No, I haven't. That hoodlum again. The one you used to know. Jerry, you look off your feet. It's sweet of you to be so concerned. Here, you can sell this at a higher price. It's got my fingerprints on it. Gail? Good morning, Lake. Stew's on. It'll be ready for lunch. Have we enough ham left? Yes, ma'am. All right, Lake. Thanks. Uh, I've seen the papers on the way over. So did I. Imagine the whole town will see them before long. We ought to do a big lunch business. Gail, I was working for your father right here in this place when you were born. And I was working here when he died. I guess I even got to think like him. So if there's any kind of advice you want... Just when I thought people were beginning to forget about my husband and Nick Harbin and all that mess. Then it has to come out again in the papers. You know, looking through that window, I've seen a lot of people come and go. Seems to me they're always ready to remember the bad and forget the good. So I don't figure you owe nobody any apologies. That is the way my father would have said it. One thing I'd sure like to do... Lay a meat cleaver to that Nick Harbin skull. He's paid for what he did. Yeah, you didn't do nothing, but you paid for it more. Max, that thing's been in there alone for a long time. We got no place to go. You might not. Welcome home, Nick. Nick, baby, please, you don't understand. You get some clothes on. What are you going to do, Nick? Well, I could beat your face in. Now look, Nick. You know, Sue and me, we, we got together when you were put away. Oh, never mind, Dave. You can't talk to the great Nick Harbin. What did you expect me to do? 
to sit around in a convent waiting for you for five years? I didn't expect a thing. Not a thing. Except maybe you two had tried to chisel a little. You, I figured for a quick deal. I got money and you got talent. But I didn't figure on supporting you. You've got no right to talk to me now. I don't have to talk at all. There you are, baby. A little room rent. I'm leaving tomorrow. Right now, you two are getting out of here. No. No, we're all going, Nick. All of us. Well, dumber and dumber I get, huh? Just figured you'd have chisel, but uh, you're after the whole bundle, aren't you, buddy? That's right, buddy boy, that's right. Now, come on. Come on, I want you to meet a friend. Doll, out the back way. We don't want to disturb anybody. Maybe I better check. Suit yourself. Two reporting, three two reporting. Go ahead, over. Code two, Nick Harbin seen in blue convertible. Repeat, Nick Harbin in blue convertible, headed north on Beverly Drive. Roger, 302, over and out. Now get out. You're an idiot. I couldn't help it, Mr. Hoffman. He got wise. That's done. And you, you got any brains? What's your deal? <laughs> now, that's sensible talk. Prince here, he was in for 10%, if he got a handle on the dough. You scratch in, and you get 10%. And in addition, you get his 10% as a bonus. <laughs> All right, Ernie, you're on. No! Oh, look, Mr. Hoffman, I got him here, didn't I? I tried. I come to you in the first place. We did everything we could. Sad. Make your deal with Harbin. Look, Nick, this isn't fair. Maybe you're right, Davy. Maybe you're right. Where are the keys to your car? Still in it. Why? I don't get it. All right, I'll spell it out for you. See, I was going to turn the money in, that's all. Just so I could relax. Are you stir-crazy, Harbin? Why, that dough isn't even hot anymore. Maybe not to you, Harbin. So I don't want it, Davy. None of it. You can have my share. What? Oh, hey! What's going on? Kill! All right, big shot. You want that money? You tried coming after me.
Sorry, mister. I got another job. Got a motor cocked out, and it's going to take me at least a week to fix it. Okay, then. Just uh, fill her up. I'll get mine hammered out later. And uh, check that oil and water, too, huh? Two highways he can take. Bottom of Nevada or maybe Arizona. You read the sign, we're closed. Hey, Mac, I uh, want to find out something. I want to talk to you. Say what he wants, Mike. Yeah, what do you want? Hey, you damp or something, mister? What are you... Come in, Nick. Nick Harbin? Any chance of me getting a sandwich? Sandwich? Why, you crook, Larry. get out of here. Uh... Well, you've had enough trouble. You don't want no more. I won't give her any. Lank, just stop your mopping. You go on home. And leave you here alone? Don't worry, Lank. I left my machine gun out in the car. I'll be all right. Just leave things there. Go on home, please, Lank. She'd better be all right, mister. She'd just better be all right. All I have left is some ham. That'll be fine, Gail. Nick, when you're through eating, I want you to leave. I want you to get out of Gold City. Don't you even want to know why I came? No. I don't want to hear anything you have to say, not a word. Just get out. Just leave me alone. Look, I, I know how you feel. If you did, you wouldn't have come here. Gail. Sammy, he meant a lot to me, too, you know. I had to bury him. He wasn't underage, you know. He knew what he was getting into. All Sam knew was cars. And that other one, Jerry. And they're both dead. <laughs> I hate you for making me remember. How did you find me? The old man, Packy. Said you went home. Sammy told me once where you came from. Gail, I, uh, I brought you something. I thought you might want it.
Why? I've had this to help me remember for five years. What'd you do? Did you save it so you wouldn't forget to hate my guts? I came here on account of Sammy and you. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll do what I came for and then I'll get out. You still got your car, that two-door sedan, green? Car? In the garage at the house, why? Well, that means that half the money's yours. What? The money, the payroll, Gail, it's half yours. And you think I'd take it? Sam came home that night. He was shaking. I thought he was sick. When I went for the doctor, Sam wandered off. You know what broke him up when he saw Jerry? Get killed. Say it. Sam was trying to walk it off. A policeman called him over and he started running. They called me at 2 o'clock in the morning. He was delirious and dying. You burn it. You give it away. I don't care what you do with it. I don't want it. Gail, you got it. Sammy put it in a frame section underneath the car. So that's why you came here. That's why the big play. Half to me, big man. Okay, you know. I could have come at night and taken your car and headed for Mexico. No. What did they do to you in prison? Convert you? Well, they gave me a little time. I, I had nothing but time there. I went to school and I did a little thinking. Made big plans. Little ones. I was going to get a job. I was going to get out and get married. Maybe. I was just tired of running, that's all. I, I wanted to stay put. I wanted to belong to something, just somewhere. And, uh, here I am again in a stolen car, see? I'm running again. You could have stayed out of trouble. What happened? I thought I had friends. They're just like everybody else, just itching to get their hands on that money. Why don't you take it, huh? I'll head for the border. They'll follow me. Nobody will even know you've got it. It's a lot of dough, honey. You can get out of this town. You can just go wherever you want. You really are trying to make it up to Sam, aren't you? To both of you. Oh, Nick, I'm tired. I don't know what to tell you. Can we talk tomorrow? This is a small town, but they get newspapers here, too. If you went to a hotel, it would just make that much more trouble. All right, then I'll, uh, I'll sleep in the car. My place is right up the street. You could have my father's room. You know, that's... That's the only decent words I heard since I got out. Take this with me. I might be able to eat it now. Come on, think, think. Dave, I can't remember. I've tried. Look, you heard Arnie Hoffman? You want to wind up dead? Now, we know Nick was tracing Gail Russo. I know. All right. You knew Gail. You knew Sam. No, she went home. Home! Some crummy little town. Where? Oh, in Arizona, I think. Where in Arizona? Silver City. Silver City. 
Come on, find it. There's no Silver City in Arizona. Dave, I'm sorry. I tripped. Oh! Dave, think, please! Think hard! Where? Come on. Go! Go. Go what? Gold City, that's the name. Are you sure? Honey Hop, Dave Prince. I never heard of this gold city. Are you sure you got it right? Well, Susie said that's where the girl used to live. Well, we can't be sure that she's there now. She better be there. I don't like wasting time. How much farther? Oh, I see. It's 200 miles, maybe 250. <laughs> Boy, Sammy sure knew his job. Welded this plate on like it was never supposed to come off. What do you do when you get it off, Nick? I told you, we'll talk about it. First, I gotta make sure it's still in here. Five years is a long time, you know. I don't like leaving Lank with the cooking and serving at the cafe. It's in here. Every bit of it. Gail, you hear me? Yes, Nick. I heard. There's a couple of samples, Gail. Just a couple of samples. Did you ever figure you were driving the most expensive car in the world? You've got the money now, Nick. There's a big difference between thinking about it and holding it like that. In all my life, I heard people say, boy, if I only had dough, I were only rich. Depends on how you get it. There's a lot of guys that didn't bother. You were one of them. Yeah. Look here, you take this. You burn it, give it away. Do anything with it. Go to Europe, I don't care. That's all I've got to give you. I told you, you don't owe me anything. I wasn't talking about owing. I was talking about giving. You know what it's like, Gail, to think about somebody every day for five years and not be able to do anything about it? You know what it was like last night in your father's room, right next to yours? Nick, please. I wasn't making a pass, Gail. I'm just telling you. I knew what a loss you thought I was. I was hoping maybe it wouldn't be like that. Maybe you'd be willing to forget what happened, but uh, so I was wrong. At least it kept me going. Nick, please, I can't... Don't say anything, Gail. You don't have to. So please, just don't even try. Nick, would you give the money back? You tell me that's all I need. Would they stop bothering you if you gave it back? They'd probably give me a medal. Then we could leave together. Leave? Give them the money and get out of Gold City. We could go anywhere we want. Oh, Nick, we could start all over. What about your restaurant? Well, Lank can have that. He 
you certainly worked hard enough all these years. Oh, you could get a job. We're not fooling ourselves, are we? We're not fooling ourselves. We got it made this time. Come on, let's get to the rest of the money out of there and go tell Lang the good news. Huh? We can catch him before he closes for the night. Well, what's that for? Oh, we'll hide it under the back seat until uh, we're ready to go to the cops. I can just see Lang's face when we tell him the good news, huh? Talk to you later. Okay. Went back to the files, dug up a lead on the Russo woman, where she came from. That'll help. Look up a place on the map called Gold City. There it is. Well, that guy at the gas station said she ran a cafe around here. There's got to be a cafe around here someplace. Why would anybody want to live in a cemetery like this before he dies? Nine o'clock. It's dead already. You, you idiot! If it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't be going through this. Well, I couldn't help it about Harbin. You know... Wait a minute. There it is. Gold City Cafe. Pull up here. Go in and see what you can find out. Too much left. A cup of coffee will do. Is uh, Mrs. Russo around? No, she's not. You want something? No, I'm just an old friend of us from L.A. You know where I can find her? No, I don't. But if you ought to give me a name, I can tell her. I want to surprise her. Well, uh, she ought to be in pretty soon to go over to Mars menu with me. Thanks, pal. Yes, sir. Not there. But the old guy's expecting it back in a few minutes. Good. We'll be waiting. Check those silences to make sure they're working. All right, let's go. The seats stay in place all right? It's fine. Okay, first thing in the morning, we're gonna take that money to the sheriff here in Gold City. You know, <laughs> they got Brodney and Hoffman and newspaper guys, all of them with their own reasons for cutting my throat, just waiting for me to go for that money. Well, there's gonna be a lot of flip lids when they find out I've given it back. <laughs> You're not beginning to feel sorry about it. Honey, remember that old gag, happiness won't buy money? Found out today it's uh, it's no gang. Blank must be in the kitchen. Well, let's get him out of there. Welcome home, Nick. Don't move, Harmon. Nick, what? We're looking for that old guy. He told me to tell you he's all tied up in the kitchen. How'd you find me, Hoffman? Prince, the door. These are the goons I told you about. All that's missing are the cops in the newspapers. No cops, no newspaper reporters, just a friendly little meeting. We're very cute back in L.A., Nick. 
I don't like guys to get cute with me. Well, you should have told me, Hartman. I didn't know. Now you know. So now we talk about the money. Being out in that night air makes me lose my voice. You lost yours too, Mrs. Russo? Don't touch her. You worried about her, Nick? Dave told me how Nick feels about you, Mrs. Russo. He was right. Nick doesn't want to see you hurt. So suppose we think about it this way, Nick. My boy here takes off his coat so that Mrs. Russo can see how strong he is. Hoffman, if he's so... Easy, Nick. Easy. I've seen some of the jobs my boy has done on women. Very good. Now, what do you say, Nick? Do we talk about the money before he messes her up or after? Look, Hoffman, if your goon touches her, you're going to have to kill me. Then who's going to find the dough for you? Who wants to kill you, Nick? Davy boy here will just shoot you in the leg, that's all. Nick, they're crazy. They've got to be. Take her. Go ahead. Make one move, Nick. You're going to get it. Leg! Get some water. Dump on his head. It's no good to us if he can't talk. Maybe you ought to convince Nick that you don't want to get marked up. I'm so blurry I can't see. Just keep looking. Got to be here someplace. Out of the way, doll. There it is. Biggest life, Gold City Cafe. Pull in here. I don't want any surprises. Help him, Dave. Nick's having trouble. Oh, make that cruel talk. Prince! Nobody does anything around here without my saying so. Now I've had enough of this yakety yak. Get over here. Get the girl. Watch it, Nick. Watch it. 260,000 bucks. What? Okay, Hoffman. All right. You wanted to mark her up, huh? All right, I'm gonna see how you can take it. No, Nick, no! You did a classy job in the goon. Don't go spoiling it now. What do you want, cop? You want him to walk out of here? Who's gonna take him? What's the matter? You think I'm deaf? You're badly hurt. I better call a doctor. Yeah. Nick, <laughs> please! Why don't you listen to her? Drop the bottle. Hi, Cap. Okay. Your money's in the car. Under the back seat. I'm in no shape to stop you if you want to. Take it and make a run for it. So what do you think, cop? I got a little religion because I stopped that goon from finishing you? You would have done it five years ago. Gail and I were taking the money tomorrow morning to the sheriff here. If you can still walk, you can go with us. Hey. To see that, I'd go in an ambulance. The doctor will be here in a few minutes. And the police. Thanks. Oh, I better sit down. <laughs> You're helping me. <laughs> Boy, that is a hot one. 